All right, we're going to start the recording here, guys. Let me know, Nate, uh, you've got that going. All right, guys, let me know. Can you hear me okay? And you can see my screen, so it'll be ZBrush, and it'll be uh, the last uh, before the final release of R6. I have a bit of a cold today. The uh, toddlerist, I guess, or toddleritis. My daughter brought home a cold. She rebounded. I did not. Uh, okay, so uh, a couple of administrative things. Uh, I may very well lose my voice. I lost it a little bit yesterday, in which case we will promptly uh, end this. <laughs> um, but uh, otherwise, we are good to go. Uh, and I'm a little distracted because of this cold, so let me know if I'm not top form. Just remind me via chat. I've got that on. So who's checked out ZBrush 4R6? I know Michael said he had a bit of a problem with it. Pretty awesome Z remesher, right? I was holding my tongue back last week uh, in our class because I couldn't say anything. So let's talk a little bit about um, about R6, and just so you guys have a sense of what to expect, I'm going to move this face off to the side. Let me start the screen recording. Testing. Okay, so let's make sure we understand what this feature release is really all about. And we can just look at the um, feature framework that I told you guys about. There's soft, hard, there's controlled, and there's freehand up here at the top. What do you, you know, we know ZBrush 2 was here. It was all freehand and it was all soft forms, right? Which, where do you think this R6 feature fits into this framework? Does it fit down in the controlled, like we're getting a little bit more controlled with soft, a little bit more controlled with hard, or a little bit more controlled, or I should say freehand, with the hard surfaces? It's really important that you start thinking about it like this, because this is how you know, this is how it is being developed. Uh, ZBrush is making it segue. Now we know hard and control, these are things like Maya, uh, Max, and uh, XSI. Okay, very good with hard surface, not in, in a controlled way, but not very good with freehand at all. Now, of course, Autodesk has tried to go this direction. And there are other companies that are moving in this direction as well. They tried, and they continue to try. Where is ZBrush going? Well, you can really see with the trim brush. And the most important thing is the advancements that they've done in partial visibility and in poly groups. All of that points to me that the main focus of this release was freehand hard surface. They already have a lock on the soft surface. They really wanted to get into the freehand hard surface. Now, we're going to look today at a feature called uh, planar brushes or really backtrack. And that was one of the attempts to come down here into the controlled area. But there's some issues with it. We'll look at that. But really, freehand and hard surface is really what this was all about, in my opinion. Okay, and so now Z remesher, that just solidified the whole ZBrush as a as soft surface. What do you, what's the biggest advancement in Z remesher? What where does this lead? You know, remember anything that Pixel Logic develops, they've always got 
a stage one, a stage two, a stage three. It might take five years or three years to get to stage three, but they've got it. So someone had mentioned animatable topology. Sure, I, I think they're going to have that. That's stage two. But let's think even past that, and I, this is just a bug in your ear I just want to put in there. Imagine, for those of you who know Maya, imagine Maya could make topology on the fly, like within, within seconds. Imagine if you could bring in your high-res model into, from ZBrush into Maya. Maya would use it as a reference model, and then based on what you were doing, rigging, or animating, it would on the fly, as in create just for that computation and then throw away, it would create topology on the fly so that you never had to think about topology. That's, in my opinion, where this is going. The general idea is that topology is a computer restraint and the computer and software programmers and us artists will solve that problem. It's, it's not unsolvable. But remember how many of us, let's say if you were around five years ago, how many of you could ever have imagined Z remesher would work in 10 seconds? Literally 10 seconds for a full model, like a complete model. Did that seem possible to anybody? I was there and I didn't think it was possible. But it's in like 10 seconds. So if computers continue to increase their processing power, we're talking about this going down to one second in the near future. And then you increase the algorithm's efficiency, you're talking about half a second. You're talking about topology on the fly pretty soon. Okay, the other thing that's really important, and let's just come in here, is what they've done to control shift. And by the way, let me just make a note of this. Notice how my drawing has these, this polygon shape. We're going to talk about this when we talk about brushes, because all brushes have this this issue where if you move really fast you start to see these these bits but anyways that's for a little bit later today so control shift is where they spent a lot of time and that's in the hard surface side of things so if you press control shift and you open this up you're gonna see a lot more not just slice not just the clip but you're also going to see crease and you're also going to see trim. Now if we open up stroke, you're also going to see some changes in there. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this today, but I'll give you a quick review of it. Let's just press control shift and now we've got these guys, rectangle, circle, curve, lasso. I don't mean those are brand new. Excuse me. <coughs> but your usage of them is going to become a little bit more common. So uh, let's talk. We haven't really looked at what clip does, but let's look at this real quick. So I'm pressing Control Shift on the keyboard. I'm going to clip curve, and I'm just going to draw a line across. And that line basically cuts this model right there at the top, right? But what it's doing is it's taking all of these polygons and it's just flattening them. So they're still there and you can see it. They're all still there and they get really tight at the borders, at the edges when the form um, was a little slower in its transition. But let's do the exact same thing now with this brush called uh, Let's do trim curve. Okay, it's telling me it can't do it with subdivision levels. Fair enough. 
So now what it's doing is replacing the topology completely and closing this hole. So it, it literally is like a knife. It lops it off and closes this with basically the same geometry or the same algorithm inside of this modify topology close holes. Now there this is really there's a lot of importance here actually to to the way how do I say it? The topology that's created here is part of why Z remesher is so important. If PixLogic was able to find a way for you to create fantastic topology and do it quickly and efficiently, then they could do whatever they wanted during the sculpting phase. So clip curve kept your topology, so to speak. And it didn't cause, you know, it wasn't terribly strange. Everything was still there. Topology was fine. We could use morph targets and layers. But you're seeing them move away from, say, you know, well, it takes a little while, actually, for the technology to update for subdivision levels. I'm sure trim in the future will respect subdivision levels. But anyways, the point is, they're freeing themselves up by developing things like Z Remesher to augment their ability to just cut things up and do crazy, crazy things. Like, let's come in here to trim, cur trim curve with BPR radius. And look at that. I mean, museums are never going to be the same. No more is it profound art to have us cut up a model. <laughs> you can do it in 30 seconds or less inside a ZBrush. Hey, we need to um, talk about the humanity. Well, there you go. You need to slice a shark in half to fit into a, uh, a tank. Done. So there's a lot of cool things that it can do. Can you guys see me okay? Andrew's mentioning um, a little bit of a lag. Okay. Just let me know if you have a lag, uh, Andrew. It's very possible. To, it's the computer or the internet on your side. Uh, best thing to do is always go to speedtest.net. And uh, that'll really help clear things up. Okay. So anyways, I don't want to get into that stuff too much because we'll get into it later. But I wanted to show you that because it. Uh, I wanted to show you the trim brush and that ability to cut through things because it speaks to the direction that they're moving. So now what we want to do is we want to just talk about brushes. <laughs>